All right, it's uh, Learn Wake analysis time. Looks like user Learn Wake member special one has uh, submitted a video and, and wants some advice on getting more pop on heel side and toe side wake jumps. So let's go through this video and see what we can figure out. All right, for the most part, right here, this is great position for a strong you know, heel side pop. You, you're sitting in position um, so you can use your legs. Your edge is pretty good, but um, as you can see, the, the, wide, the wide edge out kind of forces you to go a little flat at the wake, but it's not really going to affect your height that much because you can, still, you can still push a lot with your legs since you're in a seated position. Um, if you shortened up your approach, you would force yourself to be to edge through this area more instead of flatten off through this area. And, um, you know, that will definitely enhance your pop a little bit more. I think the, the biggest part is just kind of how you leave the wake. So let's, let's rewind this and check that out and try to pause it. Whoops. Let's go back even a little bit more. All right. We're starting to do it. Okay. There we go. Um, so let's check out this edge. That setup position is perfect. But see right there is there's the big, big problem. I mean, you you have probably over six inches of leg push that you're lacking. And that's just from your, your hips to your knees. And then you also have a bend, you know, through your hips. So if you stood that much taller as you left the wake, you would go that much higher. I mean, that's the big problem. And a lot of times this happens when riders look at the top of the wake. Instead, if you tried looking at the bottom or the face of the wake... So a lot of times when you're edging in, I have riders look right here. Because if they look right here, then they'll start standing tall here, and then they'll be taller through the top of the wake. A lot of times if they are edging in right here, and they look here, they'll start standing tall here, and it makes them late. So, you know, they'll actually be riding through the top of the wake bent, and then they'll stand tall here. Um, and then that kind of decreases their pop. So this is your big problem. If you fix this issue... You're going to you're going to fly way higher. I mean, for the most part, your edge isn't bad. Like you don't really have to change that. But this part you do have to change if you want to go higher. Got to bring those hips up and you got to stand tall through your legs. I'm going to rewind it just a. am going to try to pause it in a different spot and show you kind of another little position. So let me see if I can pause it. See right here how your kind of your hips are a little bit out behind you. So you have kind of a a bend from your shoulders through your hips to the board so it kind of makes like this V. Let me see if I can pause it in a better position so you can see it. I want to try to get a little bit later right there. See how your butt's out the back and if I looked at you from the side like if we were um, on that sea dew that's that's uh, chasing you um, you would be able to see from your shoulders to your hips would actually make like this V shape and that again is not being tall I mean, this is not bad pop, but you could definitely be going a lot higher if you fixed your pop position and then your position through the air, bringing those hips up and just being overall taller through the air. Um, taller you are, the higher you go. That's pretty much the bottom line. Let's look at your toe side jump. Um, the biggest thing I notice on your toe side approach is that motion right there. So your first movement into the wake to start your edge is a bend and break at the waist and if you start the movement in towards the wake with that movement you can never it's really really hard to recover from that position and it actually you'll see it get worse right there so see this lightning bolt right there that that's a big problem with your leverage and when you hit the wake this is going to act like an accordion and it's going to absorb a ton of that pop now, if you opened up your shoulders towards the boat and got everything in line down the rope, you know, there that would be one less thing to absorb the pop and you'd go a lot higher and you can see it. I mean, right here, this is, this bent position is going to absorb a lot of your, your toe side pop and you can see it all compress right there. You actually kind of get squashed down. So, and then that's why you fly through the air a little out of control. So let's rewind that. Check it out one more time. So that's where the position starts. That's where the bad habit starts. 
and then it gets worse as you go in and then you get compressed because of the position so what I would work on is for to fix this toe side is I would work on doing um, two-handed backside slides um, I honestly if I was to ask you if you could start out here do a two-handed backside slide and slide into the wake um, I'd imagine the answer would be no just because of this position it's really hard to do a backside slide a two-handed backside slide in that position so um, there's a question for you um, if you reply to this post to answer that question can you do a two-handed backside slide um, sliding from out in the flats towards the wake on your toe side approach side if you can't then that's kind of the issue with your toe side um, edging position and pop position once you figure out how to slide with two hands on the handle um, towards the wake on your approach side I think you'll have a lot more pop on your toe side jumps so those are the two things you need to fix to improve your jumps um, overall I mean I, I think you have really good control on the water um, and a lot of that's just going to come over time uh, with comfort and just practice and maybe changing where you look at the wake uh, for your hillside jumps so if you have any questions, just uh, hit me up in the bulletin and uh, we'll figure it out. Thanks for the submission.